Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today I am going to be reviewing Theft of Fire by Devin Erickson. Uh, so let's dive right into it. The first thing you need to know about Theft of Fire is that this book is incredibly fun. I just, I can't say that enough. I, I enjoyed the whole journey through uh, start to finish. It grabs you right away and it keeps you, it carries you all the way through to the end. If you're looking for a good fast paced page turning book that, that's really engaging, uh, you can't go wrong with Theft of Fire. That right there, if you take nothing else away from this review, take away that this book is fun. It's seriously fun and I had more fun reading it than I've had reading a book and I've... <sighs> I don't know, years? It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed reading a book as much as I enjoyed reading and finishing Theft of Fire. Um, some books are fun part way through and then they sort of trickle off. Not this one, no. It's fun all the way through and uh, that's rare. So remember, Theft of Fire is fun. The second thing you need to know about Theft of Fire is it's written in the first person present tense. Basically, that means instead of saying uh, he walked into the room, sat down, there was a woman there and she looked at him, it would read something more along the lines of I walked into the room and sat down. There was a woman there and she looked at me. Now, there's a few effects that this has. Uh, on a narrative and uh, one of them is that it basically it basically has to tell itself in terms of a series of events unfolding in real time um, with some lapses where you sort of jump forward in time in the future but you can't really bounce around a whole lot unless you're remembering things through the perspective of the main character. The only downside to telling a story like this in the first person present tense type perspective uh, is that occasionally it can feel a little bit on rails because events are uh, occurring and you're just sort of along for the ride and you don't always feel like the main character has a real big sense of agency. And I didn't think this was actually a problem. Um, there are stories where you feel like the main character is powerless or isn't actually driving the plot forward. And sometimes that can be a really big problem. Uh, in Theft of Fire, that's not a problem at all. Uh, he does have some agency and he does have some control and he does his best to exert it in kind of a ham-fisted way, uh, <laughs> which, you know, I can relate to, you know, a little bit. The main character in this book, his name is Marcus Warnock. This is a drawing of him right here. And uh, he's sort of a, a big, strong, blue collar, uh, asteroid mining, space pirate type of a character. He's a bit of a rogue, crew of one, kind of a lone wolf type character. And uh, right at the very beginning of the story, he is joined uh, <laughs> by no choice of his own uh, by Miranda Foxgrove pictured here in the middle. So that crew of one becomes a crew of two uh, due to no choice of Marcus's and all sorts of interesting uh, character dynamics and conflicts ensue uh, as, <laughs> as you would expect when uh, you basically have your ship hijacked. The other thing I wanna say is like all of the characters in this book are interesting, conflicted and uh, deeply flawed individuals. There's no superheroes here. And, you know, Marcus may be big and strong, uh, but he has his own weaknesses and he finds himself in a, effectively in a, in a powerless situation. Uh, Miranda is, uh, <laughs> uh, she's a bit paranoid and uh, she's really smart, but she lacks, she lacks the ability to trust and common sense and some other things. Uh, she's, uh, she's driven powerfully by self-interest. All the characters in this book are driven powerfully by self-interest. And um, uh, so because it's a, told in the first person present tense, it sort of unfolds as a series of events. And because it's so fast paced and compelling with interesting characters, um, it doesn't really matter that it feels a little bit on rails every once in a while. The depictions of space combat uh, are, are more accurate and interesting than uh, most that I've read. And I found that really compelling and, and quite refreshing. There are some thematic homages to classics like The Star's My Destination, um, certain parallels between uh, Gully Foyle from that book and um, uh, Marcus Warnock in Theft of Fire, which I thought were uh, kind of interesting, um, especially when, when it comes to sort of their arc. Um, they, they both sort of experience a 
to greater and lesser degrees, uh, a certain amount of redemption. I do have some small points of criticism for the book. Uh, it's not a perfect read, although I did enjoy it thoroughly, as I said before. The uh, the big male character and the tiny female secondary character, uh, who is described as being genetically engineered, like four feet tall, very chibi. But she's genetically engineered to be that way, and it's not really any choice of hers. It's just the way she was made. So the explanations for this are rational, but it's still a little odd, and um, it's not quite to the territory of fetish, though surely it will cause some people's eyebrows to raise, particularly the more sensitive readers. Obviously, it didn't bother me too much. I really enjoy the book. And of course, some of that was necessary for the characters growth because they sort of had to get over um, certain aspects of themselves in order to embrace uh, other aspects of themselves in order to grow. And, you know, what a human thing that is, right? I think we've all experienced that. Similarly, uh, the depictions of sexual tension uh, occasionally felt a touch gratuitous, but not overly graphic, so it, it didn't get in the way of the story. And, uh, you know, that's the key thing I want to kind of focus on in terms of my criticism is uh, there are things to criticize, but they don't get in the way of the story. And as somebody who spent years of his life working as an editor in film and television, um, the number one thing for me when uh, reading a book or watching a movie or a TV show is I'm the anything that is in there that kind of pulls me out of the story or doesn't contribute to moving the plot forward and uh, enhancing the growth of the characters and completing their arcs. All that feels really alien to me and sticks out like a sore thumb. So I may be quibbling, you know, maybe I'm just grasping at straws. I'm looking for nits to pick, as it were. I'm trying to give this a a fair review and not just not just sing its praises, although there are many praises to sing. Um, it's tempting to see this book as a fun romp chock full of uh, popular culture references uh, and uh, not social commentary, but it is there. Um, it's not preachy, which I really like. There's no sock puppets, uh, but it's philosophical in its own um, organic way. It's not so much like bad sci-fi where, you know, the, the writers come up with particular situations as an excuse to explore social dynamics and, like, force a conversation. Uh, it's, it's much more along the lines of there are necessary occurrences in the plot development, and that causes um, characters to feel ways about things and have reactions to those occurrences uh, and uh, struggle with their own motivations and the motivations of each other. There's <laughs> a, a lot of interesting philosophical points that come up throughout the unfolding of this story. I mean, property rights, class struggles, wealth inequality, work ethic, even AI sentience, uh, individual agency and 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 individual rights uh these all these all come into play in terms of the interplay between and conflict between these characters and boy are there some epic arguments and fights um there is so much conflict between uh the two well, i should say the three main characters um i haven't really mentioned leela but there's a lot of conflict between these three um and it all happens in a very organic way as a story unfolds, which is, <laughs> it's so refreshing. And none of that felt forced to me. That's a big accomplishment in the first book, I gotta say. Uh, I, uh, I, I aspire to that myself in a lot of ways. Speaking of uh, social commentary, uh, it seems to me that each one of these main characters feels uh, to some degree or another uh, an amalgamation of different social groups within the U.S. And their conflicts as characters in a lot of ways uh, reflect our conflicts as a nation and as a people, which I really appreciated. Um, as the stakes build, as times go on, they have to put aside their differences and they have to find a way to come together in order to survive and achieve the thing that it turns out they all want. Uh, because these very different people, they're all, they're all stuck on the same ship. And in the end, so are we. Theft of Fire, folks, this is a really 
fun book. It was a great read, a heck of an accomplishment for a first time author. I'm, I'm really very, very impressed. And I can't wait to read the rest of the books in the orbital space series. Uh, Devin Erickson, bravo, sir. Well done. Theft of fires, ladies and gentlemen, four and a half stars out of five. Great read. Go pick up a copy. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to, click the like button, click the subscribe button, hit the follow button on X, whatever, you know, internet stuff. I hate doing this pitch. I don't want to do it, but you know what to do. If you liked it, do the thing. If you didn't like it, let me know. Tell me what I could have done better. I also want to mention, uh, while I've got you, that I will be doing a read of a science fiction short story that I wrote called The Death of Paul Shepard. It was uh, published on the metaworker.com uh, <laughs> years ago now, but... Uh, um, if you like listening to me talk and uh, uh, you, you want to check it out, then please feel free and uh, I'll catch you later.